Good morning, and welcome to St. John the Baptist Cathedral, Basilica Parish. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. At this time, would you take a moment to silence your phones? Our presider today is Father Cecil Critch, and our opening hymn can be found in the celebrated song 6.31, Christ Be Our Light. Please stand. <clears throat> Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. Today we also <coughs> celebrate uh, Our Lady of Perpetual Help. It's today as well. It's not in our, <coughs> our actual uh, format for the Mass today, but we remember that because it's a great feast for the Redemptorist priests and brothers because the icon which we have over here. Uh, in our church, the icon is under the under the trusteeship of um, the Redemptorist Saint Alphonsus Church in Rome. So let us today remember the Redemptorist in our prayers and ask Our Lady's intercession for our church and our parish or archdiocese to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Let us call to mind our sin. to heal the contrite of heart. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. You came to call sinners. Pray Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right, and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. Jehoiakim was 18 years old when he began to reign. He reigned three months in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Nehoshta, daughter of Velnathan of Jerusalem. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, just as his father had done. At that time, the servants of King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came up to Jerusalem and the city was besieged. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came to the city while his servants were besieging it. King Jehoiakim of Judea gave himself up to the king of Babylon himself, his mother, his servants, his officers, and his palace officials. The king of Babylon took him prisoner in the eighth year of his reign. He carried off all the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He cut in pieces all the vessels of gold in the temple of the Lord, which King Solomon of Israel had made, all this as the Lord had foretold. He carried away all Jerusalem, all the officials, all the warriors, 10,000 captives, all artisans and the smiths. No one remained except the poorest people of the land. He carried away Jehoiakim to Babylon, the king's mother, the king's wives, his officials, and the elite of the land. He took into captivity from Jerusalem to Babylon. The king of Babylon brought captive to Babylon all the men of valor, 7,000, the artisans and the smiths, 1,000, all of them strong and fit for war. The king of Babylon made Mataniah, Jehoiakim's uncle, king in his place and changed his name to Zedekiah. The word of the Lord. The response to Psalm 16, protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. There is fullness of joy 
in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Protect me. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many deeds of power in your name? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Go away from me, you evildoers. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise person who built their house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish person who built their house on sand. The rains fell and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Now when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as their scribes. The Gospel of the Lord. We all really can relate, especially in Newfoundland, to the image in Jesus' parable of a house built on rock, and a house built on sand. We are familiar with houses built in places where they should not have been built, such as on a natural floodplain of a river. As a result, when heavy storms of heavy rain come, the excess water has nowhere to go, and that can cause flooding further down the river. The quality of a house relates as much to where the house is built, what is built on, as to the actual materials of which it is built. The most important part of a house is often what is not visible, the foundation. By means of this parable, Jesus is inviting us to reflect on the foundations of our lives. Are our spiritual lives built on solid foundations, on rock, so that when the storms of life come, will we stand firm? As with the house, the most important feature of our lives is what is not, what is not most visible, that foundation. And Jesus is calling on us to make him the center, make him the foundation of our lives. We do that by listening to his word and putting it into practice. When our lives are shaped by the Lord and his word, when they are directed by the Holy Spirit, they are solidly grounded, and we will be able to withstand the worst that life can throw at us, when life gets difficult, when the storms come our way and threaten to engulf us. In one of his letters, we are reminded Paul talks about being rooted and grounded in love the love of Christ. When our lives are grounded in the love of Christ for us and we allow that love to flow through us, then we walk and stand on solid ground and we will become solid ground for other people who need it. Jesus tells us that he is our firm foundation and with his help we can endure all things. 
our prayers are for inter of our inter intercession today. For Holy Father, Pope Francis and Peter, our Archbishop, for all those who lead and guide our church, we pray to the Lord. We pray for peace in our world, especially in the Middle East, in places like Haiti and Ukraine, Sudan, and all these areas of trouble in our world, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for our redemptorist brothers and sisters, especially the priests at St. Teresa's. We pray for them, we pray to the Lord. For all those who are asked for our prayers of healing, for Walter Tobin Jr., Yvonne Steiner, Sister Roisin Gannon, and all those who are undergoing hospital treatment, we pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, for Sister Betty Quinlan, whose funeral is today, for Gertrude McGraw, whose funeral is Saturday. We also pray for intention for the day, Apollonia Delia Teets, Father Pat Power and his family members, Mary Seward. We pray to the Lord. And for your intention today. We pray to the Lord. And God, our Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear and answer all the prayers we have in our hearts. We make them in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom we made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest a resurrection. And so with all the angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. with confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the glory and the Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, the people of God, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And we share the peace of Christ with one another. Have 
of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter on the marvel, but, but only say, say the word, word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn, 6.1, Bread for the World in the Celebrating Song. Let us pray. 
May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil and lead us to what is right. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. I'd like to thank all of you for your presence today, Alma for our music, for our cantering, and Rudy from reading, and Stephen for playing the organ. So thank you very much today. Our missioning hymn number 527 in the Catholic Book of Worship, O Christ the Great Foundation, 527. <laughs> Jesus. 